today I'm gonna talk about using the arpeggiator and the sequencer. If you like these tutorials, check out my Patreon page in the description. On Patreon, you can find a patch book with many of the patches I use in this series. This channel lives on the support of my Patreon members and the patch books are just a way for me to offer something back in return for the support. But whether you sign up to Patreon or not, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you get notified of when I put out new videos. So that's my sales pitch. Let's get back into talking about the matriarch. So for both the arpeggiator and the sequencer, the rate knob obviously determines how fast the notes will be played. If the matriarch is synced to an external source, either through MIDI or through CV, or by using the tap tempo, the rate turns into subdivisions of the clock to give you musical timings of things. If it is synced, you can also hold down shift and turn the rate division knob, and that will give you triplets. For right now, I'm just gonna use this as the rate and not divisions of the clock as we go through how to use the arpeggiator and sequencer. So let's start with the arpeggiator. Let's turn it to our arpeggiator mode using this switch. You can see arp, sequence, and record. In order to arm the arpeggiator, we have to hit the play button right here. The direction switch here tells us how the arpeggiator is going to play back, whether it's ORD, which stands for order, and that means the arpeggiator will repeat the notes in the order they are played. So if I play going forward, they'll play forward. And if I play backwards, they'll go backwards. We have forward and backwards, and here the arpeggiator will play in the same order as before, but then I'll play it in reverse as well. And last we have random, which it will play all the notes in random order. The octave bank switch controls different things depending on whether or not you're in ARP mode or sequencer mode. If you're in arpeggiator mode, as we are now, the switch is for octaves. If you switch over to the sequencer mode, this will control the bank. I'll get there in a second. For right now, think of it as an octave switch. So obviously with it in octave one, it only plays back the notes that you played. If you set it to octave two, then the pattern is played and then repeated one octave higher. And if we set it to three, you guessed it, it'll go up twice over three octaves. You can use this blue button hold to latch the arpeggiator. So if I click it on. That way you can have your hands free to adjust the sound and to turn it off, just unlatch it. Or you could press the play button, of course. Okay, let's talk about programming sequences. So the sequencer can store up to 12 sequences. There's four different sequences in each of the three banks. And each of those sequences can store 256 steps. To record a sequence, it's really pretty straightforward. You just set this switch to record, then we're automatically in sequencing mode. So here I'll set the bank to one and the sequence to four. And now I'm gonna record a sequence in bank one, sequence four. In this first example, I'm gonna have the, the paraphony mode set to, to mono. The sequencer acts a little bit different when it's in a different mode. So I'll explain that in a second. And of course, I'm gonna take a deeper dive into this in further videos. So right now in mono mode, I'm gonna record a quick sequence in bank one, sequence four. Once you have the sequence recorded, you need to turn the switch back to sequencer mode 
and the sequence is automatically stored. To play it back, we just have to activate the sequencer in the same manner we did the arpeggiator by turning on the play button, and then we just have to play our starting note. So let's make another sequence, but we're gonna add in some ties, ratchets, and rests. Let's start with some ties. So I'm gonna switch it back into record mode, so we're gonna overwrite what we just did. So if two identical notes are tied together, then the notes will play as if the note is held through two or more steps. If the notes are different, then the notes will be played back in a legato style. We can use this tie button to add some ties. Now, if the sequencer is in mono mode, as we are now, you can also play in a legato style and I'll add the legato notes. Let's program a sequence and add some ties. So I'll, here I'll play the first note and I'll tie it to the second note, tie it to the third note, tie it to the fourth note. Now I'll play a few other notes and let's make a few legato notes. And then we'll tie that one together. And then I'll just play a few other notes. So let's hear what that sounds like. And you can see the tie button turn on here as the ties are activating. Now I'm gonna overwrite what I just did to show you that also if you didn't, for the legato style notes, you can just play a note and then press the other note before lifting up your uh, the previous finger, so playing it in the legato style and it will save the ties automatically. So but to hold a note for more than one step, you would have to use the actual tie button. So let's talk about some of the difference between using the sequencer in duophonic mode and quadraphonic mode, as opposed to monophonic mode. So first of all, you can't use the technique I just showed of playing in a legato style because that would confuse the matriarch and tell it to use different oscillators. So you have to use the tie button but you can play chord progressions and record sequences with chords. With this, we can play four notes. The order in which you play the notes chooses which oscillator plays each note. When the sequencer plays back, the notes are played simultaneously. So I'm gonna set it to record mode and again, overwrite the previous sequence. And this time, we're in quadraphonic mode. So I'm gonna start by playing a chord. And again, the reason I'm playing those chords laid out like that is because I wanted to select the oscillators in order. So now I'll play another chord. And another chord.
and then a final chord. Let's hear what that sounds like. So as you notice, those chords were played all at the same time, even though when I recorded them, I was arpeggiating them. Okay, let's take a look at some of the patch points. We'll use these in greater depth throughout the series and in some patch explorations in later episodes. But for today, let's just at least go over them. So on the front, we've got these four points. The rate division in point is an input which will do the same thing as turning this knob. So if it's not synced to anything, then putting in a patch point here will slowly increase and decrease the rate of the arpeggiator or the sequencer. If it is synced up, then the musical subdivision will change as an LFO moves it up or down. That can be really cool when we're using external sources and have external rhythmic patches going. We'll explore that a little bit later. So as I went in, went over in the keyboard section, the keyboard is velocity sensitive and the voltage that is created by the velocity of the keys is accessible from the back. Here it's the same idea. The velocity that's recorded when you play a sequence, you can also access that in order to modulate other things right here. So when you're recording your sequence, if you play a note really hard, the voltage that comes out of here is gonna be much higher than if you play it really soft. The CV out and the gate out allows us to use the sequencer to sequence other modules and gear. The CV is volts per octave pitch CV and the gate is the gate assigned to each of the nodes. When we cover the global settings, there's also some flexibility to have the sequencer disconnected from the keyboard and we can patch oscillators in the same manner we would a Eurorack module by coming out of the pitch CV and going directly into the oscillators. We'll talk more about the creative opportunities that provides when we get to the global settings and patching ideas episodes. Finally, on the back, there are four patch points. First is the clock in. This point allows you to sync the sequencer with an external clock. On off lets you turn the sequencer on and off. Reset obviously restarts the sequence over again. And clock out is where you can use the, the sequencer to sync it up with other Eurorack gear. So that's it. That was a lot of information. And as always, remember that everything is sort of tied together. So even as I'm making these videos, some things might not be totally clear until later sections. We'll be revisiting the arpeggiator and sequencer over and over again throughout the series. Once again, please subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments. Check out my Patreon page if you want to support the channel. At tier two, you get patch books for the Matriarch, DFAM, the Complete Sound Studio, and the Subharmonicon. At tier three, I'll put your name into a monthly drawing for one of my DIY Eurorack module builds. Either way, I hope you liked the video and you got something out of it. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the oscillator section. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.